Hi, I'm Tanya Wilhelm, and this is my best friend, Dexter. And in this DIY video, I'm going to show you how to make your own washable dog snuffle mat. So stay tuned. So a dog snuffle mat is a bunch of fabric pieces tied to a backing. And we're going to do a fabric backing, that way the entire project can be thrown in the wash. This DIY demo was actually part of my Cavalier Facebook group, so you can check out that link below if you're interested in joining. So what's the point of a dog snuffle mat? What do you do with it? Well, you put food in it. Dogs are all about their nose. They love to sniff and hunt and forage. So this is a way to put food or dog treats inside and then they have to sniff it out. And you can even make things more challenging by putting the food inside and then rolling it up. And then they have to unroll it. Or one more challenge, you put the food inside, roll it up, and then hide it. And then they have to go find it in the house. How about one more challenge? Same thing, food in here, roll it up or not roll it up, put it in something. Maybe you put it inside of a box that your dog has to get in and pull it out. The sky's the limit. One of the benefits of using a snuffle mat is an engagement for your dog. You don't want to just put your dog's food down in his bowl and two minutes or 20 seconds later it's gone. It's more engaging for your dog to incorporate his food into an enrichment activity. Give him something to do. As you may know, Dexter is a raw fed dog, so I'm not putting his raw food inside here. Instead, I'm using dehydrated vegetables and fruits dehydrated meats, freeze-dried meats. All the foods that I put in Dexter's snuffle mat will actually be counted towards Dexter's daily caloric needs. So part of his food, not just bonuses, but part of his daily caloric needs. So let's go to our Facebook Live and see how it's done. But this is what we're gonna be working on here. And this is my start of a snuffle mat and we're gonna go over how to do this and options so I have a longer option here and a shorter option here and I'll be the first to admit I haven't tried it yet with Dexter I'm gonna wait until I finish it off with Dexter and I, one of the reasons is I'll tell you why as well so everything is going to be relative to how you want to do it so I'm making his snuffle mat 12 inches the, the bottom fabric 12 inches by 12 inches and again I was playing around this larger one and I'll give you more details are six inch strips where the shorter ones over here are four inch strips and that's nice too the problem that I had with the four inch strips was I had a really hard time getting it through and tying it. So four inch strips were here, six inch strips were here, but I really like, I think the six inch strips look really, really nice. The first step is you want to have, and it, it is again, flexible. You want to have a fabric that is, is washable. I like fleece because when you cut it, it doesn't fray too much. It does do a little fraying. I ended up taking, this was just kind of my trial is I just grabbed a, a fleece throw that I picked up at Walmart and the downside for this one it is it's pretty thin which for the strips is good but for the base let's see if I can get in here for the base when we do the tying I don't you know it's just a little I'm not sure how it's going to hold up so I would recommend for sure that if we're going to do if you have extra cheap blankets or fleece or whatever is to have it maybe a little thicker. So the fabric fleece that you buy at the at the store, like the fabric store, is perfect. That would be that would be the choice. So if I if I were to make another one again, I would get that. All right. So first step is, and again, any size you want. This is a this is a 12 by 12 one. And let's see. So hopefully you can see. Can we see? So it's going to be pretty decent. By the time I get these other ones in, it's probably going to be like that. So that works for Dexter and I. The other part is, this is time consuming. So when I start to show you how to do it, it's time consuming. So 12 inches by 12 inches. I like these cutting mats, and then I like this ruler. It's got a little lip, and then I can kind of go like this. So, let's see. So 
So it's all lined up. So my fabric is lined up to the corners. And if you can't get it lined up perfectly, you can just go ahead and, and cut it off. Again, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. So don't worry if it's not like perfect, perfect, perfect. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go 12 inches. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. And with my little mat and cutter, I can make it even. So with this and the cutting, I'm able to put my 12 inches here and the line up here so I get a relatively nice line. And then I got my little thing here. And then I'm just going to cut and hold. And then I always like to remove it first. <laughs> there we go. So we got 12 inches this way. And then we're going to grab that line over there. And this helps make everything square and everything. So 12 inches here. So there's my base. That's going to be the bottom of everything. So 12 inches by 12 inches. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to end up making holes <laughs> that we're threading these loops. Not loops. They're, they're going to be strips, right? So, and we'll get that in a second. But since this is out and it's lined up and everything's on my little square, now I want to make my dots. So I want to make one inch dots all the way across. So I'm going to go down one inch and go one inch, one inch, one inch, up, 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 and then do the next one, da, 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 and da, 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 da. So now my ruler has got this nice straight line. And every inch, I'm going to put a dot. So I'm going to put a dot and a dot, oops, and a dot. And we're going to do that again. Boop, boop. And I'm, oops, going to do a couple of these. And this is where the people that do replay, first of all, I appreciate you guys here, but the people get to do replay can actually fast forward. So now we're going to go down another inch. And again, I'm going to grab that. Whoops, I offlined it a little bit. Shoot. <laughs> so I was wondering why I didn't even up. So I ended up looking at the wrong part of my ruler. And I have it a half an inch over here at the beginning and then a one inch one inch. That's, again, it, it's okay. You know, mistakes happen and it's not that big of a deal. But I want to make sure they're lined up with that first row. So I'm going to continue with the first one being a half inch and then an inch. So, again, you're going to want to normally go off at that one inch. But flexible. Things are flexible. It's not, not the end of the world. By the time you get everything tied in there, it's no big deal. Um, so here, since I have one and a half inches at the end and a half inch here, I can go ahead and, and do another half inch or not. I'm just not going to. Just one more thing to tie. It'll, don't worry, it'll make up for it. So I'm going to do one more, one more set. Again, I want to make sure that I'm following with my original dots. And then I'll show you quick. Alright. See, look at how tedious this is. And I haven't started, <laughs> I haven't started tying yet. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side now. One reason is we can make sure that that ink kind of dries up a little bit. So, again, this one's 6 inches and this one's 4 inches. But the strips are going, that we're going to do today, for me, and, and it's up to you, is we're going to do one inch width by six inches long. So my extra fabric over here, I'm going to kind of corner it up. And remember, things don't have to be perfect. If you have a lot, I've already kind of dug into this. If you have a lot, you can, do I have, I don't quite have 12 inches. If I had 12 inches over here, I could do two strips at a time. Go back to our fabric square and remember we're pretending that it's all the way across now this is the really tedious part because now we need to get holes in all those dots so all those dots are going to be places we want to make a hole so okay let's see I'm gonna have to peek around the camera so the best thing that worked I should say the best thing because I only gave it a one shot is to kind of fold it in half ish and then I'm going to make my cut. So, let's see, where are we? Sorry. So, I'm just going to kind of fold it where that little thing is. That dot, that thing. And not a big cut. <laughs> where are we? Sorry. I'm trying to, there we go. So, we're just going to kind of do a little snip. And then again, I'm going to go do a little snip. 
And then I'm going to continue to do that, but I'm going to bring it down here so it's just a little easier. Okay. And you're going to snip, 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 snip. Now this is where you can do whatever you want to do. Um, as to do I snip all of them? Do I, you know, wait a little bit? I ended up with this one snipping, I think, three rows and then I got started. So I'm going to come back over to this one a little bit. Um, so, no, I didn't. Can, can we scratch that and edit it? I did actually snip them all. And it's probably not a bad idea, but we won't snip them all today. But just a few to show you. Maybe I should have taken better notes. I lost it. And the snips are so little that you can lose them a little bit. A little different than me teaching you how to do something training with your dog that I do over and over. And I think I started to say the reason I haven't used these snuffle mats for Dexter is I my dry treats, because I because he doesn't get dry food, are used for training versus just sitting there and kind of doing nothing. Um, so then what I want to do is I want the back side, the underside, to be the, the ones that have the, the ink spots so that it's not as noticeable. And all right, so this is where I'm going to try to see if I can see. So there's the ink. So this is the bottom. So that's going to be the top. So I'm going to take one of my little thingies and I'm going to that top corner one. And I'm going to try to thread it through. And if I need to snip bigger, which sometimes I do, um, I can use my scissors and snip bigger. All right. So we're starting to go there. And then about halfway. Now I'm going to go to the... There we go. I'm going to go to that next hole and put this one through. Okay. And again, sort of even it out here. So that's the back and that's the front. I'm going to tie that front together, so I'm going to tie those two, so I, I have to put it down here. And you don't tie it super tight, you just want it to make, you know, whoop, that one's stretchy. So, that, so it's tied. So we're tied there, and then there's the back, okay? Now, I'm going to go in the same hole. So here's that. I'm going to go in this hole again with this. And bring it through. And then I'm going to go to that next hole over. And then <laughs> those grunts are Dexter. And bring it through. And again, I'm going to pull it and tie it in the front. So we're going to tie it in the front. Okay? So now I have two. And then there's my back. So you're going to continue that for that line up there. So you're going to go in that one again with your next little loop. Why do I keep saying loop? Strap, but... Uh, strip so in there and then in the next one and then tie it so you're going to continue and you're always grabbing that last one so the, they're always going to have like two in there two in there two in there two in there now on the ends so when you come down here you're going to end up i'll show you let's show you what that end one will look like bring my little snip just in case i didn't okay so remember we're pretending that we've accomplished the end one can you see how this is going to be tedious? Look at that. Maybe we should time it. So we're going to go ahead and, and tie that in a, in a tie. You can knot it, I guess, if you want. So, you know, I don't believe these things should be unsupervised. So <laughs> we don't want a dog who's going to eat those and pick those things and pull them apart. So supervise, supervise, please. Don't leave them in their kennel. All right, so remember, we're pretending, we're pretending like we went all the way through. And then this is our end. So now I'm going to take my next strip to go down to the next line. I'm going to go in that end again and then down this one. Okay, so my corner is like that. And I'm going to tie it. So now we're getting to that corner over there. So my next strip, <laughs> see it starts to get a little like, where'd it go? That is, is actually that dot. So when it tied, it kind of moved. So I'm going to go in again. We're always we're always going into that last one. So there are always going to be two in that hole. So I'm going to go in that one and that one. But I think, I, oh, there's the snip. So again, we're going to, sorry, I can't do it right in front of you. I have to see. We're going to go in that one and then that one under. Maybe if I was 20. I have this thing about being 20 right now. 
and then tie that. Okay, so now we're officially on that second, and again, we're pretending like that one's tied. Now we're officially on that second row, and we're going to go in that one again, and then that one again. Not again, in that one. One's going to be going in again, and one's going in a new hole. So when you start, one is going in the previous hole, or yeah, previous hole thing, and the other one's again, and then tie it in a knot. And then again, you're going to go in there, and there, and there, and there, and there, and there. And eventually, you'll get, you know, like that. So 12, I'm about halfway done with, with Dexter's. Um, so I just have to keep plugging away. And there you go. <laughs>